Hello! Greetings. Alright, so thank you so much for joining me, and thank you for your patience, I appreciate it. Uh, apologies. I did not realize how long it would take me to make a cup of tea. I knew I would be cutting it a little bit close, and unfortunately, uh, quite a bit closer than I wanted. So, uh, let's get on with today. Um, right now you're looking at the tail feathers and some flames for a phoenix. Go ahead and slide up here. I actually moved the camera out of my way when I was doing this line work. Um, the tablet is off. I have my sketch over here to the left at the moment because the image was a little bit taller than our dragon. So I have details down here, which you weren't seeing either. Uh, details down, excuse me, uh, down here for the, uh, the coals and embers. Um, down here, so I wanted to uh, at least block in a little bit of that, uh, work on polishing up a little bit of this, because in my sketch you'll see that, for one, I was recentering it, so I'll make this image a little bit wider than it was when I sketched it, and uh, these feathers got cut off, and these are also incredibly um, challenging to go ahead and try to fill in with these perforations here when, I'm, when I was uh, redoing my line work. So I want to polish that up a little bit um, because I don't like how some of them came in. So I have not yet decided if I want to close up the ends of these. I kind of like the idea of leaving some of them loose, but it is a nightmare if anybody's going to like scan this for like digital coloring. So that's why I'm even debating it. Um, I want to change the shape of this one down here. In my original sketch, you'll see a lot of the feathers that I included uh, for the tail. I just left as open lines, just so I had an idea of like the flow of the form. So this is new stuff because I'm closing up at least the very end so you can see where tail feathers are. But because of that, um, some of these have some unusual variations to them like this one. just randomly get skinny in the middle of the feather and much wider. I am... Nah, that's not a stylistic choice that I'm making. Um, so, yeah. Bits and, bits and pieces here. I just want to polish this up real quick before we move on to the dragon. And, to be quite honest, it's a little bit of a stall tactic. Um, and that's because I still haven't decided what color for the ink work for the dragon. Hi, Akatero! Thank you. Uh, he says that looks dope. I appreciate it. So, yeah, uh, just need to polish up some feathers. Um, I like this part because I'm going to untape it and I can move it how I want to. It'll make some of these angles a little bit easier. That's another reason this side looks especially janky. Um, just because it was there and not tilted on an angle, which I would have preferred for, for getting some nice flowing lines. Uh, yeah, this feather, I feel, needs to be a little bit trimmed down to get the shape that I want. And I'm kind of 50-50 on if I want to adjust the, uh, the shape of some of the feathers. Um, you know how, how feathers, when you splay them out, they have the, like, they look like tears, but really it's just the feathers been been kind of agitated and where the, the fibers aren't just sitting all together. I don't know if they would specifically be called fibers, but that's what they are in my head. I'm going to adjust this line. This should be slightly more movement. So that's what I wanted to do since I still had the tablet out anyway. Uh, like I said, I was trying to get all the, the line work done before I was on camera again, just because that, I'm sure, was not the most entertaining of content. I want to move this up a little bit, just a touch. And smooth out that line. Alright, okay. so I'm just about there with this feather. Um, you know what? I should have left that line. Left that 
plan for this one. I don't love how that's this one's sitting. Maybe I'll bring it in just a touch more. One of these really nice wispy type feathers that a lot of times phoenixes remind me of cranes as far as um, overall body shape and things like that. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the ones that I've I've seen in art uh, depictions lately, anyway. And just looking around, is there stuff I want to change? Am I good to move on? I'm not positive I'm going to keep this this way because this section's kind of clustered together, where the rest of them are very free and open. So either I need to add more feathers over here. Or I need to remove feathers there. I want the tail to be really full though, so I might just add one or two more over here. Like one over here, one over here, and then that would probably be okay. Like maybe like that. Maybe one more over here. That way there there are quote unquote clumps or clusters of feathers. I think I want to change the line on this one. Just curve that ever so slightly. So my thoughts are to go ahead and polish this up for another minute, uh, to go ahead and fix this, this wing edge because some of that spacing is definitely wrong, and then uh, move on to the dragon. So we'll be, I'll, I'll be leaving the phoenix alone for a couple of days because I want to just give me some time away from it before I revisit it. And that's just for probably a day. I'll probably be lining that one tomorrow if the uh, the dragon is done today. My my hopes are that some of these lines will come a little bit a little bit smoother when I get to the the final. And if any of you guys know, well. Actually, what I need to do is I just need to see if Papermate makes this in a 0.3 millimeter, because if they do, that would be perfect for my needs. I'm just going to get rid of this masking tape. I don't mind the low-tack tape staying on here, but I don't want the uh, I don't want to put masking tape on this screen. I mean, I can clean it with rubbing alcohol, but I'd rather just leave adhesive off my screen in general. Um, this shape needs to be fixed. So this might lead to a lot of erasing. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I hate allergy season. Okay, I think what I need to do is just bring this one out just a touch. I tried to hit my inline mic, but sneeze was faster than my hands. <sighs> Stuff. This edge in. I feel like that one probably needs another tweak. Probably. Yeah, that definitely needs some blue tweak. Alright. But these are reined in to where I think they should be. And now it's just fixing the shape. Alright, 
I don't mind this one being pointy, but it needs just a little adjustment there. I do have my brush still on the desk. I can be moving these eraser bits. Not too worried about it on this one because, like I said, this one I already know is planned to be line work only. see it straight face up and I think these are good I have these wings kind of canted into a group together here because of how the the wing fold is shaped it's like a, a little triangle here you picture and then the rest of the wing uh, like largely a little bit more rectangular for where the rest of the feathers are attached I tried to stick with that. Uh, some of my lines got a little bit, a little bit wonky. I haven't been rotating my pencil as much as I, I normally do. I think that's because of where this button is. But normally, when I'm drawing, what I do is I'll draw a little bit, rotate, a little bit, rotate. And what I'm doing when I'm working off of that edge here is I'm creating a, a nice sharp point for when I need like that really fine detail. So normally, I, I try to stick with that that angle and. Uh, you know, continue rotating this. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it, Kateru. It's a bless you. Uh, is this going to be base for more watercolor? You're going to add color with some other medium. Uh, this. Okay, so the primary plan for this one is line work only. Um, and I'm, I'm planning to do colored line work for both this and the dragon. There's supposed to be a set. And these will be prints for an online platform for uh, members who go ahead and upgrade. And then um, the secret bit is that at some point uh, what I'll do is I'll be scanning this line work and creating a background for it so I could do a gold foil print version. And that's going to be available later on to to my, my uh, customers on that platform. So, so twofold. So for your Dragon of Phoenix members on Fae Home, you could expect to get this print during the membership uh, drive. And then uh, later on, for, for you people who are watching, you get to get to be in on the secret that I've I've planned on uh, doing a print run of these. So, um, just adding a little bit more detail into the fire, which is a little bit out of frame, so I'll move this tape. And I just want some interesting shapes and a little bit of realism to the fire. These lines are very, very choppy looking. So I will go ahead and post updates as far as the progress for the prints. Uh, honestly, you'll probably see me working on them at some point for that part, the uh, the colored backgrounds and and the foil print uh, prep work. Which yeah, that's that's the main reason why I'm a little bit a little bit distracted coming up with the the color for this dragon. Um, I want to throw in a little bit more random like embers. Ashes, dust, uh, a few little, little flamey bits coming off the fire. I f That's what I forgot to include. I had um, a little bit of fire on the wingtips. Definitely more debris around here. You know, 
I don't know what it is, but that has been the most fun for me drawing lately. Like, I like the little... the shapes that fire makes. Like, maybe I never grew out of my pyro phase. I don't know. Um, I don't want to have everything be fire. Though I am tempted to do, a, to do like, a flaming crest for the bird. I did a... Uh, it's just the general eye shape, and then I added a ball for, uh, like, the, the ball of the eye, but I'm I'm in a debate on that one, too, if I should do if doing on the wingtips. Yeah, a little bit on the crest of its head, too. <laughs> you said it first. I, you know, that, that was actually in mind a while ago. Here you can see. I even dated the, oops, I dated the original sketch. Uh back in April 26th, so I had that idea back then, but I didn't draw yet. <laughs> it was just one of those, like, I'm gonna sit and think about that before I decide. Um, but yeah, um, I'm still in a debate on I'm doing it on the uh, the crest, and I forgot to close up the beak here. Ooh, bad me! I forgot to transfer some lines. All right, that looks pretty good. So I think our phoenix is done enough. Oh, I forgot to put the embers back in. That's what I was. That's the whole reason why we're still here on this. Um, <laughs> because I had uh, finished that up. And I have some flames over here that I didn't get in. And for the embers, I'm going really loose with these and just doing just some shading. Because I'm going to do this with pen and ink. I'm not sure which ink color. I am really, really tempted to do this with like shades of red, orange, and yellows, and then get down here in this ink and maybe like a purpley tone. Probably the muted gray. That would look really good for some embers. But the main thing is for me not to do shading. And I'm, I'm emphasizing that with you guys because I have a terrible tendency to start a project and then get in there with shading anyway. So, we'll see if I can avoid that. I love these little thin spots in the fire. They give such a, an interesting uh, variation to them, the flames. I'm going to remove my low tack tape. So as far as I see it, Phoenix line work looks good enough. And actually, the more I look at it now, these feathers seem slightly short. I'm just gonna extend that just the tiniest bit. Is that better? I think that's better. I'm gonna leave that alone. And to the scene over here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Something that had been bothering me was just the flames just dying down. I want there to be just enough separation that you don't just automatically I don't know, lump it in with the, uh, with the phoenix that they are two separate entities. 
I also don't mind them being pretty close together. Let's see if that reads a little better. these a little bit more. So that may change. And I really don't like this one sitting there now. Move you over here. Makes a little more sense. Have a little gap in the fire. Alright, and extending our embers just a touch. probably check out a reference of embers. That's something that I want to have a little bit of shape in here, but for right now, the main thing is for me to see that there's contrast so I know where, where placement is. So I don't mind working on this just a touch more before I ink it. And I have at least a day to go ahead and figure that out. Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of feeling like maybe a fiery crest, but um, I, I want to dwell on that one a little bit. I don't want to spend all of our time playing with the phoenix today when I said I was inking a dragon. And now, now we go from having my tablet set up to putting it away. So first, I'm getting the masking tape off my sketch. Because if I put it back in the pile and masking tape's on there, who knows what that tape is going to be sticking to. And we don't want to damage works in progress because that's what I do. I have works in progress and finished stuff sitting around the edge of my desk. So let's not wreck that. Right, so just warning you, I'm about to move stuff on screen. That sticky spot on here. I think that's masking tape that got on here. Okay, that's good enough. It's off. Alright, and then putting it down. Yay, and nothing was damaged in the process of putting this tablet input away. Mm. So we say hi on Twitch. Hello to Twitch. And anybody live on YouTube, well, uh, you know, join me on the, the recorded. <laughs> um, so yeah, one one minor thing I think I'm going to change as far as when these videos get posted over on YouTube is just go ahead and cut the time before I start. That's that is a good idea, I think. And I'm going to get my drawing board up here. And put my tea over there. Now I woke up early, so I didn't need to, uh, to be drinking coffee on screen. I even finished my, uh, my other drink I normally have. Can you tell that this board has been through some stuff? <laughs> I have had this for probably like 14 years now. You can see that's some bleed through when I was doing a calligraphy project. Um, some edges from painting, making sure that, you know, edges got, you know, I, I worked right up to the edge on certain pieces. Yeah. Um, this was one day getting stuck in a in the door of the van. Just just enough. So I was getting stuff out of the back and then it got wedged in the front door area. Just like snap. Like, well. So I'm not sure 
I hadn't really thought about how I was inking this on here. Maybe I should actually grab that, uh, the XP pen rest. So it can be angled, and probably angled off to its side, like this. It's gonna depend on if it actually can sit up here and display well enough, so. I can't have it right right oriented because I don't have enough desk space to get you over far enough. Yeah, that's that's not gonna work. Okay. The first, I'm going to get this back out. And then I'm gonna switch it over to the left. Luckily I don't have any details where the handle is. And my mug is in the way. I'm letting that sit. Stable. It seems stable. I don't like how it's framed right now, though. I can move you guys back up here. The, the debate is here. I need to know what color this dragon is going to be. Um, I think... Oh, let me go ahead and break out my... Uh, I know I have a needle eraser over here somewhere. At the very least, I have it from my, uh, my black and white cassette. If you guys are looking for a drawing set for black and white media, this is the one I would recommend. Uh, it's by a uh, Creta Color. Let's see it in print in just a second. Creta Color. I put a uh, a paper towel in here just because I didn't want stuff to to be able to roll around at all. There's also a bit of foam that's in here and a polishing leather. But, um, and this this doesn't go down all the way, so I'll go ahead and just angle it a little, little bit. But you have so many versions of like compressed charcoal, chalk. Uh, some of these are oil based, some of these are dry, and this is a really really lovely drawing set. I've uh, I've loving lovingly abused. Um, I don't actually use beatable erasers all that often, which this has been used on charcoal, so I don't want to use that one. I thought that one was cleaner than it was. I'm really weird about not not distorting them, except for like a little ball. I can't see where my regular regular eraser is. That's I have a nifty little. Plastic a box. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna just use it and just get over my my weirdness. I'm so so CD about something. It's just like, oh, I can't I can't squish it. It's a needable eraser. <laughs> That's what it's designed for. <laughs> like, why do I have these things in my head? Uh, all right. So I'm peeling off the plastic right now. That plastic is stuck on pretty good because I put my stuff away when I'm done using it. It's, like, uh, it's not gonna be the same shape or anything. <sighs> my brain, man. If you guys make sense of my brain, please let me know. Yeah, you can see I'm, I'm still not misshaping it. Like, I'm not just distorting this eraser like I could. Like, all I need it to do is just lift up enough of the graphite, because if I go with a really translucent um, ink, I don't want to have so much variety of like line underneath it. I want to really knock that down. Make that a little bit more uniform for this project.
there are definitely times where I don't mind that different variety and I don't care about graphite under my work. EC is not one of them. I'm gonna knock down my line work about as much as I can. Where you can still see what I'm doing. A couple spots where I guess my my point was a little bit sharper. And since this is a resume paper that has a very, very subtle texture to it. It's the um, it's a woven texture. I'm gonna have spots where like the when the pencil was super sharp, those are gonna kind of dig in a little bit. It shouldn't be a problem here because I'm doing line work instead of just uh, like watercolor washes. And I would probably be done this if I would just distort the damned eraser. I'm sorry. <laughs> Frustrating to see the walls that I put in front of myself. And I've taken out all of the crosswise texture. I'm going to put a little bit of that back. I want a little too firm with that erasing. Or maybe I'm just gonna hope that I'm I'm on the ball with that texture today. I really don't want to take more time on this. I would love if I'm done inking this in one go today. So I'm kind of like, eh. I also want it to look good. So I will definitely make decisions based on this looking good. I want a good outcome. I'm not doing any shading. And it's just gonna be lines. Hopefully that is interesting for you guys. Because this is why we are here. We are here to be entertaining. Alright, that's pretty darn light. And I can still see what I'm doing, and you guys can see what I'm doing. Should be good. I wanna knock this down just a touch more. I got real dark here with re trying to resketch that that side of the nose. This I don't know where my brain was just sitting with like weird geometry. All right, uh, we'll do a quick sip of the beverage and Either gold or a red dragon. Um, well, the, the, the thing with doing a metallic print, you can go ahead and do whatever color foil you want. Uh, especially if the place is doing like um, a baseline of silver, and then you can go ahead and do a color print over it. I've done that before for uh, my old business cards, which it was such a beautiful set. It, it wasn't my first, first set of business cards. It was like my third iteration. And I, I love that design, but that is, uh, that, that's the, the small business that I, I left. And that's why I'm here getting reestablished. But I am absolutely partial to gold and red. It's where the set is going, where I'm a little bit like me up on some of the cooler colors. For me, like, just about everything would be, like, purples and reds, because these are colors that I love. But, uh, I'm gonna do a temporary pause for just a moment, and drink some tea while it's still hot. And whether you're watching live or catching the replay, you can always feel free to comment. I'm gonna figure out what I want to do with my next uh, iteration for the frame, since I'm just kind of kind of winging it 
now as far as what I'm doing. So you might see stuff with um, going from sketching, going to transfer line work, ink, watercolor, dry media like pencils, charcoal, pastels, uh, what else? Uh, playing with my, my, my planner. Uh, I have a planner I'm moving towards making that my, my organization station. Um, using that and Evernote, I, I use Evernote to keep track of a lot of my notes too. Uh, so kind of between the two of them. But I use them as a pair in tandem where I kind of have a backup just in case. Because I'm weird. I, I, need, I need to have backups for my backups sometimes. I mean, the red is absolutely appealing. I also feel like it'll change the tone of the dragon. Oh wow. And now I've already rambled on for like 10 minutes. That's 10 minutes away from inking our dragon. Well, I am happy that I at least have everything prepped, ready to go, and I will certainly get started on the dragon. We'll, we'll start with my favorite part first. We'll work on the face first, and the fire, even though I'm a lefty, and that is a terrible idea as far as being able to, to finish it all in one go. Um, Uh, my brain's just thinking, like, hmm, what color? I don't know, maybe a green, maybe a blue. And I kind of see, like, maybe some... Maybe it's not actually, like, a fireball, and maybe it's just an energy ball, and it could be green. Uh, I am starting to lean towards green or blue for the dragon now. So, and as far as the the accents, um, so basically it's going to be like a standalone print type image of uh, just line work. And then later on when I do the, the background, and what I'll do is I'll convert the line work to black in Photoshop, and that's going to be the foil layer. So whatever I'm doing, that's going to be the foil. Has nothing to do with the line work for this. So it's just, it's easier to convert the color of the line work if I don't work with light colors. That's where, like, I kind of want to do some yellow for the phoenix, but I probably won't just because it's going to be a pain to go ahead and sit there and, and convert that. I'll probably have to go in and do a lot of uh, manual editing and... I mean, that could be really entertaining for some people to watch, but for other people it's, it's like watching paint dry. So, um, I'm not really, really excited to do that as a, uh, you know, a, a, as entertainment for the stream. But there'll be more of the, the behind the scenes type of stuff, I think. But um, I have my pen out. Now I need to get them out to my ink and... I have the muted ink right here. I think I'm just going to work right out of the bottle instead of mixing the color. The muted turquoise and the muted green are both such pretty colors in this set. I think I'm going to, uh... I'm so on the fence between these two. And these should both convert really well. Give a nice little little hint of color. Alright, so I'll go ahead and do a little test. Because I know I am chopping this down. Ultimately this is going to be a probably a five by seven print. It's kinda 
move you guys down. Moving the camera down so you can see a little, little test spot. Do the green here. I need to blot that because that's a little, a little too much mass tune. Ooh, that is soaking into the paper good. Alright. And catch the light. That's not working. Um, I am gonna have to delete this in order for the color to show. I'm seeing how how dark it is, mass tone. Um, so that's a little bit more fiddling. Can you tell it's been a long time since I tried doing a project like this? Cause yeah. I think the last time I was doing line work like this. I mean, not for the challenge, but like for, for finished pieces that we were going to print. Um, you know, I'm feeling the blue. Alright, we'll go with the blue. I wish you guys could see it better in person. Because this yellow cast from this light is ridiculous, and I cannot wait until I get it replaced under warranty. It can go to a cool light mode, and that's what I prefer to work from. But it doesn't work right now. Right now, um, if I go into uh, the white, like the, the the cooler light for the for this light, um, what it does is it'll be really, really, really dim. Right, I just got two drops of ink out. I need to get to my water. Where did I put my water jar? There it is. Right back here behind the board. And here's where I'm grabbing that unknown number eight. Go ahead and just give me a couple of drops of water. Go ahead and puddle into this guy. So going with two drops of ink, three drops of water, plus a little bit of water on the brush. Ooh. And there's a hair. There's a hair I do not want to my work. Ooh. Oh, who knows what I just dropped off my desk. Stuff. Alright. So now I am mixing the ink just a touch. And I'm gonna show you guys loading it, even though this is like danger zone, loading right on top of the print. I do get a drop where I don't want it. I can delete it in Photoshop. I just I'd rather not give myself the extra work. But uh there it is. I need to move this paper towel just a touch away from the edge of the brush, because I just don't want it getting wet. Reason. Let's start on this face. Ooh, I almost obliterated the line here too. This is awkward. I knew that would be. I should just use tape and flip this around, because that does not feel comfortable to lean on. Oh, and I forgot to move you guys back up here. Oh no, back up here, back up here. I feel like this is going to be a big hindrance. Mm. Well, the first line is done.
Breathing. Breathing is good. Alright, I don't... Unfortunately, my, uh... The nib won't just fit down in this little... little well that I made. I should get a, uh, a little deeper cup where I can go ahead and mix colors for, like, one-time use. I can just keep on going. But, uh, yeah, having to stop and get the brush is it terrible. I'm going to correct this line just a touch. Like the most nerve wracking part of the process. I'm glad I ate. Or I came on the stream. Oh no, I forgot about it. Alright, I need to correct this. So, the reason why I'm saying I need to correct this is I did not want these to be smooth lines. I wanted them to have variation for the texture that I was going to put in. It's this lovely texture that's like an antelope horn. And now I'm trying to slowly shape that and create like a shadowed effect and hopefully to change how that is perceived and these are all at random lines eh. maybe I'll fix it on the second one I really would rather be able to move this to a different angle, too. This might be a better effect overall just be a little harder for me not to cross over my previous line where that looks awkward. too bad. It's like breathing is good. All right. And 10 minutes left. At least I'm working on the face first because that is the part that is always the most interesting is watching the personality of the subject forming. So a little bit more ink. Just sitting there brush loaded it up. I'm not going to keep bringing that over in front of the camera because it, it, it is worth showing you guys so you can see what I'm doing for like the first time as far as like technique wise. But I'm not going to just keep risking the uh risking uh, extra blots on the paper that I don't need to. I think I originally meant this one to taper outwards. Sorry. That's better. Do the curve and then the next curve. I like that. That's working a bit better for me. Mm -hmm. 
Alright. Oh, hey, look at that. My allergy medicine's finally kicking in. <laughs> Takes its sweet time. I think I'm just going to do the lines on this side, and then I'm going to come back and do the textured bit on the other side as I go. I like having that little gap there indicating some highlight. Oh yeah, you like that too? You can't see what I'm doing. That little boy. Making some noise. Having some fun. have a face and we have horns on the head of our dragon. This is probably going to take me a lot longer than I thought. Um, I'm going to try to work on this fireball. We're going to... You see me working on this, the working from like the side of the, uh, the tip a lot because I want some really fine lines on some of these more expressive areas. But, like there's definitely spaces where it's like, ooh, I want Full flow. Want to see where these lines can go. I didn't follow all of my lines, that's okay. I am going to follow this a little bit. Kind of indicate more of a ball shape. Just a touch. Maybe a little bit from over here too. And again, I'm doing my best to stay away from shading. I have a bad tendency when I start line work, start cross hatching, bringing in washes. Every time I'm near this dragon, I just think I want to watch some gargoyles because of these claws. I'm going to correct that line just a touch. Oh, are we at the end of a playlist now? Basically, my line waits to be the shading for this. Oop. So I elbow my laptop. Nice. Thanks. I was able to, to save them after my, my terrible straight line. <laughs> but yeah, the, the horns are looking good. I'm, I'm actually really happy with the blue, too. Like they, it's, it's a really pretty turquoise tone. It's probably looking just a touch more green to you guys because of the, how cool the light is. Well, not cool. How warm the light is. 
but uh, when you see the thumbnail later on uh, both here on Twitch, I do update the uh, thumbnails, and also on YouTube, uh, you'll see the the thumbnails where you'll you'll see this in a cooler tone because I do my thumbnails. Um, I take them into Photoshop really quick and just uh, just shift it to a cooler light. Um, I think. Did our playlist in? Uh, let's sit. I'm not sure what it's doing, so I'll just have that go. Uh, I should actually be wrapping up. Uh, my small one is currently kind of chill, so I'm gonna do a couple scales real quick. I'm not trying to get crazy with it, but. Anytime he is chill and I could spend another minute, um, something that's got this much progress still to go. I want to, uh, to do that. So, you notice some of these I did upward movements. That's only going to go so far if you're just getting used to a pointed pen um, or, or nib or calligraphy pen, whatever you want to call it, dip pen. So when it comes to like these ones, as they're getting longer, you'll see that I'll stop when I do the curve out and then I'll bring it back in uh, doing a separate stroke to come down to go ahead and join. Uh, hopefully it'll be smoother than that one was. but. Uh, there's that's the reason why because uh, pens are only going to want to go up so much before they skip and I'm not trying to have it skip when I just want to build my my texture out but, yeah that might be a uh, message for me. So, uh, my phone's doing all kinds of updates. I'm going to look at those later because they aren't uh, messages that pertain to right this second. Uh, we are technically over at this point, but. Um, hmm. I'm in a little bit of a debate. Like, am I. I'm going to try to line this off camera. Or are we doing the rest of this tomorrow and then getting into the Phoenix? I th think what I'll do. Um, let's see, I have I have some 3D work to do, so I'm not sure if my desk will still be set up for this. It doesn't take me that long to switch over between the tablet input and doing other things at my desk, but it does take a moment, so I do try to think about that ahead of time a bit if I can. Um, yeah, I have a feeling we're, we're going to be inking for a bit. And I think this is the only one that I have. It's fine. Just trying to see my pencil work. Like, did I do this uh, upward stroke over there? That does make sense because this is curving away. You can't see the other side of the dragon's body. I'm just being very gentle about putting in these scales. Sure, these lines work. Uh, we got a dragon. I am so tempted to go in with shading. <laughs> they make it look like a like an old English woodcut from something, uh, some ancient manuscript. 
maybe that's where I'll go with, uh, with some of the background styling. I don't know if I'll add those type of details. I really do love, uh, you know, old manuscripts like Book of Kells. So, it's a consideration, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm going there. Um, these spots are like, okay, well, I see this bit. I think I took out too much of this line. Should probably line up here. And then down. Okay, so that's fine. Then we got this line for the belly of our dragon. I'm gonna bring it down just a touch though, because of the way that these lines are intersecting. I'm just noticing that now. I don't like that. I want to make sure that this spine has a little bit more room. The, basically our dragon's kneecap. I like how precise I'm able to be using this. It's pretty easy for me to go back to a line that I was just on because the tip is pretty fine. It's just nice to get into the flow with the ink. This section has a skip because of the wing. Hopefully that that's getting picked up by the camera. And then I want to arc this just ever so slightly higher for where the leg and the knee joined. Just to kind of give that a little bit more visual space. Alright, um... I got bored kid here, and he's gonna need to eat lunch. We do a, a late lunch after the stream because he still sleeps a good bit. So I think this is my stopping point for today. Um, I am on the fence if I will be inking either the dragon. I don't. I don't know how far I'll be finished yet, or. Uh, at that point, if I'll be into inking our phoenix, which might need a little bit of reworking for that, the, those embers and a couple little elements here and there, so I'll, I'll let that marinate. But yeah, I'm either inking a dragon or inking a phoenix tomorrow, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just keep moving forward on this. So, thanks so much for joining me today, and as always, keep drawing painting, sketching, just go ahead and do some art. See you tomorrow.